for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened and thus is obstructing our ability to deal effectively with the global political turmoil that this awakening is generating. So back in October, a group of us shut down and occupied EDF's West Burton gas-fired power station for a week to be saved from the 20,000 tonnes of carbon. We need to stop complying and start defying. This is Dark City Radio. One of the most concerning things about this is that the police seem to have been talking directly with EDF, actually helping them to sue us. This is Dark City Radio. The Sussex County Council then came up with a scheme of a link road. I am eager to hear what, you know, what you've done, how you've got there, you know, how these backhanded well, I don't know whether there is a conspiracy or the, the left hand really doesn't know what the right hand is doing within our council offices, you know. This is Dark City Radio. They didn't have the proper licences in place to cut the hedgerows down or to take the stumps of the trees out. Public inquiry was, in my opinion, rigged. There was protesters in the trees. If you lower yourself to the level of violence, then the strongest person wins. And this whole state is controlled by a body of words uh, created by the government, statutes and acts, with police by consent. And that means the statutes and acts require our consent to be given the force of law. There's so many corrupt angles going on from this, it's unbelievable, it really is. East Sussex County Council are just bullying through. Well, good evening, folks. This is Resistance News, and I'm commonly called Bob Earthwise. Welcome to your news show, where you can netcast to all about your actions of resistance. And we're here every week on Dark City Radio. DAs, or direct actions drive progress, and whether it be from Rosa Parks on an Alabama bus to the tank man in Tiananmen Square, these are the people that have affected real societal change. We don't need someone to come along and tell us how to live in our community. We've got to make a peaceful, honest, honourable stand to the best of our ability to stop this going on. And now, please welcome the Dark City Radio Resistance News Crew. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Resistance News this week. Um, there's been, well, a whole lot of stuff really going on, but I just thought that it'd be nice to, well, first of all, give you all the, the links to be able to come and talk with us. Um, obviously, Skype is Bob's Backyard. Landlines, if you're in the UK, 0161-298-0298. And if you're overseas, plus 44-161-298-0298. And actually, it'd be really good if, if some of you can give us a call this week. Um, it's a pretty free-form show. And I'm going to start this time with a little quote that I find quite poignant for what's been going on this week. If it's true that we are all from the centre of a star, every atom in each of us from the center of a star, then we're all the same thing. And therefore, it's not only me out there, sorry, and therefore it's only me out there, so what is there to be afraid of? What is there that needs solace seeking? Nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of because it's all us. 
the trouble is we've been separated by being born, given a name and an identity and being individuated. We've been separated from the oneness and that's what religion exploits. That people have this yearning to be part of the overall one again. So they exploit that, they call it God, and they say he has rules, and I think that's cruel. I think you can do it absent religion. And that was from George Carling. And I, I really do think that bit by bit we are coming to a point where we need to realise that we are all the same stuff. And a lot of the issues that seem to be around are the fact that everyone is isolated and made to feel that they're not part of the whole. And, and I'm not just talking about people, I'm talking about the environment, everything. You know, just being part of the planet, being equal to everything else that lives here. And we've lost it. We don't know what that means anymore to a, to a huge extent. It's something that bit by bit has been eradicated. I mean, a lot of the original nations around the planet knew this. And they had this oneness in their life. And, and those nations, to a huge extent, have been eradicated. And a lot of the history and verbal word from these nations is becoming lost. And, and that's a massive travesty. It's a huge amount of learning and wisdom that is just being lost by the wayside. For what? For what is it being lost? And massive abuse of resources, massive amounts of waste and greed. And these are attributes that kind of aren't in a lot of original nations. They know how to share. And if somebody's without, the rest of their community will make sure they're not. They don't have the greed mentality that is so prevalent in all society today. And there's been, you know, countless news items that outline all of this this week. Too many to to name all at once, but and it, it goes right through everything from the whistle blowing by Snowden, the various different bits that are coming out, the reactions to it, the fact that People, even presidents, don't have free travel anymore. I mean, I'm not that I agree with that type of regime, but they're supposed to be able to travel freely. Their aircraft is their own soil. Um, Air Force One, there's no way that that would be grounded somewhere and not allowed to fly over the airspace of another country. It would just do it anyway. And having sort of gone through all of that, it's good to welcome Chris into the room. And Paul, how are you guys doing? Hello, Bob. Uh, hello, listeners. How are you, Bob? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in, really enjoying the weather. It makes things kind of a lot easier just to yeah, you know, be able to be in light trousers and a T-shirt instead of layer after layer. Yeah, it's beautiful weather. We've got uh, another day of it as well, at least, for this weekend. Well, I've heard that we've got a two-week um, Azores high settling down over us, so hopefully better? it might be a bit longer than that. Fantastic. 
I just had my nesting birds uh, give birth and um, uh, leave the nest yesterday, and uh, so that's that's one little inhabitant that's not in my garden anymore, which is quite a joy to see that see nature doing its thing in my garden. Oh, that's really good. It, you mean they fledged? Yeah, they fledged out the nest. Uh, the mother taught them how to bath in the pond, and then um, they had a little dust bath and flew off and left. Okay, well, well, talking about leaving home, um, there was one little news item, and it, it wasn't from this week, I must admit. Um, it was from a little over a month ago, where I found quite puzzling, and I still can't get my head round. And that is the police in North London seized blankets and sleeping bags and food donations from rough sleepers, supposedly in a crackdown on homelessness. I mean, surely if you're going to crack down on homelessness, you provide people with homes. You don't take away what very limited resources they have to keep warm. I mean, I, it just beg a belief. I mean, how do you feel about that? I think it's absolutely disgusting behaviour. They just they, they've just uh, bypassed understanding totally and just gone to the uh, you know the, to get rid of the look of homeless people and shuffle them onto another area. It doesn't help the situation at all. It, it, it's disgusting. I completely misread that story, Bob. Uh, I thought it said police had downed crack and picked on homeless people. <laughs> I, I misread the story completely. I thought it was the, the only reason the police would act in such ma manner if they had actually been if they had actually been smoking crack. Well, it kind of seems that way. I mean, it, it, there were nine people involved in this, evidently, and they were in a disused um, indoor swimming pool. I mean, it's not like they were actually on the street. They were somewhere that had very limited comforts, that's for sure, although it, it would have had some sort of sewage and water systems, but it, it just beggars belief. I mean, it, the police, you know, their oath is to protect and serve, and it doesn't matter, you know, how wealthy you are and what you own and what possessions you have, they're supposed to protect and serve all of us, and yet here they are taking stuff to keep people warm at night. It's, you know, what's going on here? Are they going to be held liable when these people um, come across or without their, without their limited possessions? Well, I mean, you know, this story was from May. Um, May was particularly cold in the UK. Um, I haven't been able to find an update on it, so I assume that those involved survived and being that a lot of the warm blankets and food that they had came from the local community, I've no doubt that the local community replaced what they lost. I mean, the, the thing that really niggles me is that it's the police that are doing this. I mean, how does it work? the local community supplied this stuff in the first place means that the homeless people do have the consent of the government. So there's no reason the police should be acting on it, or acting on any other, you know? Well, exactly, you know, I mean, it's what harm is are people causing? I mean, it's quite the reverse. I mean, we're never, as individuals, going to be happy and contented, and that's every other individual that we're all connected to is also happy and contented. And when we've got public servants, which after all the police are, acting in such a heavy-handed manner, it, it just beggars belief. It really does. I mean, it, it sort of goes hand in hand with then you're not allowed to have food kitchens in Westminster and it's kind of like sweeping everything under the carpet. It's, you know, not taking responsibility for the 
the failures in society that produce people that have got these issues. Well, I mean, it's only the visuals that they're sweeping under the carpet. Your problem still exists. It's just it's not seen. It becomes a hidden problem. Well, it isn't hidden, though, is it? We we know that it's going on, but what what do we actually do about it? I mean, that it is a very very disconnected way of thinking that an authority like the police can act in a manner which is contrary to the oath that they've taken. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, maybe maybe it's actions like this that, that bring about change, that, that someone, so, uh, um, a wealthy benefactor with a very kind heart will see and he'll step in and give them a situation that the police can't step in on. Maybe this is what it takes. I, I did. It just beggars belief that it gets to that point in the first place. Now, I, I can't get my head around how that, that is something to do with policing. Um, it's not, Bob. That's probably why you can't get your head round it, bro. It's got nothing to do with policing. It's got nothing to do with public order. Um, it's got nothing to do with, you know, serving and protecting. And, and I've said this before, me. I think the majority of the people who police, men and women, uh, who join, they actually do join because they do want to serve the public. And they really do. Um, but hey, that's not what's happening. You can't, you know, no matter how much we try and put our uh, rose-coloured spectacles on, that is not happening. It isn't. They're not constables. They're officers of taxification, you know, um, and they suddenly change. It really is. I mean, one side of them, um, like I say, I'm sure they all start that way, except for one or two, you know, who were bullied at school. But, you know... The majority of them, you know, they start with that good intention, you know, to help and honour and serve and protect and so forth. And, uh, yeah, then that other thing happens to them uh, where they become an officer, no longer constable. They switch to officer and the good becoming evil, I suppose. Like I say, I, I don't really do good and evil. Um, I'd call it split personality. That's what I'd call it. Um, you can't say one of them's bright and the other one's wrong. I mean, they're just ill. So, what what did what has caused this switch? I mean, is it something in the training, or is it the fear of losing their wages? Um, or both? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it's either. <clears throat> I don't think it's either, man. Um, something in the training of life. Yeah, yeah, it's what's happening. Yeah, I agree with you, Sparky. Yeah, man, I, I swear I was going to go with it. Uh, I, I think that we are suppressed to a point that we we no longer identify in ourselves. And when you don't identify in yourself, you know, you, you can't relate to yourself, then that, that's that's the trigger. Um, then then you, the people look externally. They complain at everything externally. They, they blame. They look for authority. I mean, of course... Many people point the finger at the government and say, you know, in this case, the police, they're wrong and they're bad and they've got it wrong. You know, that's us now looking externally uh, again. So I reckon it's the same, you know, that us and them, um, it's the same. They're, 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 you could say they're in the dark looking at the light, uh, but I'm sure they think they're in the light looking at the dark. Uh, and I'm sure people who are looking at them, um, in this case, the police, think that they're looking at the dark from the light. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> that's kind of how it works, I reckon. Uh, the I promote right division. Well, I wasn't trying to create an us and them. Oh, not you, mate. No, I'm not saying you did, no. I try and avoid that all the time because I really don't think there's 
and us and them in in such an ex a general manner as it's being used. Um, at the end of the day, a lot of people that are given the authority of a uniform are decent people inside, and you know they'll listen to reason. And as long as you're not abusive or anything else, which is quite reasonable, um, they, will, they will often be quite compliant. But it's this change from wanting to be that way in the first place, to be there to help, to make sure everyone's okay <clears throat> and uh, everything's going without harm or damage or loss to the point where they're taking blankets away from homeless people. I mean, how degrading must that be for a police officer? So and they are ordered to do this then? Well, that makes ordered. no order. That makes no difference, does it? An order is still a degrading thing if you have to carry it out and your conscience is pricked by it. You know, you've still got to live with it. You can't, you're not going to get rid of that memory. It will still be there in your head. Every, every single situation you've been in is recorded in your head. And whether you can blank it is another matter. But if you do, that will still be there eating away at you. And, and that's one of the most damaging things, is these little bits of memory that you found really abhorrent, but you had to carry out because you were told to, will eat you away. How, how enlightening would it be if we could get some inside information on it, if we could get a, a copper or an ex-copper on the show to actually talk about it? Yeah, I can probably do that. Yeah. Definitely need talks, but we can't keep um, avoiding. You know, just just one point for Bob there, Bob. I don't disagree with what you're saying from where I'm stood and perhaps where you're stood, but are we making a presumption that these people have got conscience? I think that everyone does. I mean, even if you're not aware of it, even, you know, if you're one of these really vicious people, deep down, you know. You absolutely know. I mean, the only exception, perhaps, would be the psychopath, the vampire. But putting that aside, the vast majority of police are not psychopaths. So they know. They, you know, it's there. They know it's wrong. You know, you can't take. I mean, how can people take blankets away from somebody who's got no home? Well, because psychopaths, you know, people with no. Um no conscience, I don't know about psychopath, but people with no conscience, um, yeah, they, they take orders. They just take orders. What do they care? What's the matter to them? They've been told that, you know, these people are scum. That's scum. No matter what you do to scum, Bob, they're just scum. And that's how they see it. They don't see them as, as being a product of society. They are part of this society we live in. They don't see that. They, they want to. They want to push it away and hide it away, and they don't want it. We want it on our turf. We don't want homeless people or heroin addicts or, you know, people who are bad in our area. Push them to another area, pretend they're not there, move them away. Um, so that's how they are. They, like I say, they don't, they don't see it as a product of society. Um, they point the finger at blame and say it's their fault. It's all this, someone else's fault. So, yeah, I, I, I get it, man. I, I can see where it, where it goes and... Is there anything we can do about this? I, I mean, I've tried. I mean, as, as you know, I mean, I've mean, i stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the police and thought, you lose. I've lost every time. Um, I really have. Well, I perhaps didn't lose my self-respect, but um, you lose that eventually <laughs> in other ways. So, yeah, this whole position of, of fighting, you know, and, and they're better and worse, and it keeps coming round for me at the moment, this... What are we trying to balance here between, you know? Um, it is a, a very small proportion 
uh, of people who do this to others, the other people are always outraged and we always find out about it and get outraged when it's too late to do anything about it. You know, we, we don't get info before it takes place. You know, we don't know these people are living there, you know, before and we find out after the police have been and, you know, driven them into some worse situation than the situation they're already in. And like yourself then, Bob, I, 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 I struggle. I struggle to see how in the individual policemen who are doing it can actually do that. I, I really do. I mean, you know, the, the, if it was myself, I, well, I wouldn't be a police officer for very long, I don't think, or a constable, because I'd have to say something to my superior. Uh, and if you do, you're out of the club. Yeah, the, but what brings that change of mindset about is what I'm trying to dig out. You know, what is it that changes somebody from wanting to help to wanting to cause the most difficulties that can possibly happen to somebody who can least afford the barrage of that? Don't worry, mate. One day, no, not too distant future, and I don't really do a lot in the future, but it's definitely there. It's already happened for me, but in these people's future, which I'm actually living in, they'll have to deal with all their emotional interaction. They'll have to deal with all their energies they've projected at others, all the shit they've ever done to themselves or anyone else, all the times they judge themselves, every time they judge somebody else. Every time they looked outside themselves and projected towards another individual uh, in wealth, worth or measure, whether it be emotionally, mentally, sexually, physically, financially, socially, and they'll have to deal with it. Wow. So I would have compassion for those. I think in that case, now when we look at it, the guy who's looking for a blanket to stay warm tonight will have a hell of a lot less to deal with than those that just took his blanket from him. Well, hopefully he's got two or three blankets to replace it. I mean, that's how I figure community works, because I'm sure the people that were involved in helping these guys in the first place will be outraged by it. You know, it's... Oh, yeah, I agree, Bob, but it's three months too late, isn't it? Or two months too late. By the time you go there to try and help them people out, most of the time they've already gone. This happens time and time again. <coughs> um, information and media that's required to get out there to the people instantly doesn't get out there. It doesn't. We always get it when it's too late. I mean, you know yourselves, um, with Boris, and the work Boris did down there, you know, a brilliant soldier, a proper warrior, you know, because uh, I know he got upset and angry about what was happening, but he stayed calm and he stayed focused and, you know, didn't let them pull him into conflict. But he was telling us about what's happening now. It's happening now. Come and help us now. Come and, and I know some went, Bob. You know, I know some went. But really, even myself, I feel a bit guilty about that. That's, that was more important than getting on a radio and talking about it. You know, I know it was the early stages of all this and people were saying it's... We've got to keep this going. And I suppose now, looking where we're going, yeah, they were may maybe they were right. But on my level, on my personal level, I'd sooner be in a position where I could go down and camp out in somebody's, you know, in, in some, some, some lord or laird or authority's land. So they think it's their land, of course. Um, you know, just to a point where, not, not to get arrested or locked up, but just to a point where, you know, it, it, it gets people to think, as you say, just, just look around you. Look at the world we're living in. It doesn't have to be like this. It really doesn't have to be like this. I, I wouldn't put yourself down for not going. I mean, the same as I don't. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to have the time and the resources to be able to help Boris post stuff up instantly as it was happening. Um, and, and as far as the radio stations concerned that has been a massive help to a large number of people and without the radio station a lot of this stuff just wouldn't come out and it wouldn't come out in a conversation way that we all present where we're 
trying to find the solutions around these issues that, that we are discussing. Oh, yeah, don't, don't get me wrong, Bob. I, I mean, um, <laughs> we've got good news as well, you see. There's good news as well. I mean, we've all worked for a long while, all of us collectively here on, on Dark City, um, focusing as much positive energy and creative energy as we could. Uh, and that's took its toll on some. Uh, others have, have, have flown with it. They really have. Uh, and I feel now like we've broken through. We've, we've, we have. We've, we've, we've definitely uh, chinked their armour, no doubt about it. And the number of people who are, who are starting to contact us and speak to us. I mean, Barry today said his email was full. He couldn't. He'd only had a day off. <laughs> so um, it is beautiful to know. Um, beautiful to know that, that knock on effect um, so yeah I, I, I'm not saying I, look I'm, I'm quite critical me I, I like to think that I'm I'm, I'm I'm constructively it's constructive criticism I, I don't just like put people down you know um, but if I, if I think well hang on a minute you could put that over there and I'd make it a bit better that's how I am I, I'm, but I'm super critical with myself Bob oh god I am you know uh, I judge myself all the time. Oh, you know, I'm getting better at it. Um, but I am. I'm really super critical of myself. I, I've judged myself and beat myself up for getting it wrong for long enough, mate. Oh, God, I have. Um, yeah, now I'm learning to, slowly but surely, to listen. I think listening's really important. And, and, and also, I'm important. Uh, I know I say it to a lot of other people, and I really mean it. You know, each one of us is. But don't let anybody tell you you're not, because you are. You're vital here, uh, and I know that about me now. And I didn't. You know, I was saying it, and I meant it. And now I know it. I know I'm important, the same as I knew it for everyone else. I now know that for me, and that seems to be the flip round. Uh, often we we look at others and we we don't see them as ourselves. We can't see it from their position. We, we generally can, but once you you have been in their position, or you've you know you've you've smelt it through their nostrils, seen it through their eyes, then you do get a deeper uh, comprehension of the situation. Of course, it doesn't mean that you should condone it, because you know that these people are lost and they do not know no better. It doesn't mean you should condone their actions as many people do, to gain comprehension, and then, you know, they, they, they condone these actions, they turn the blind eye, and they're the dangerous ones, they're the really ones, the ones who know there's an alternative and don't take it. But that's the beauty of what we're doing with this, isn't it? We're able to um, show people in a a verbal sense, a lot of what all these alternatives are. Oh, yeah. I mean, and physically as well. Uh, I mean, Sparky come down, didn't he, to the allotment thing. I mean, if we haven't done all this, I wouldn't have met these people. We wouldn't have come together. You know, the the, um, the Rick Simpson um, message statement he's just put out, um, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, we wouldn't have a group of people gathering together to to work together what are we doing now? I mean, where are we going with this? You know, like I say, we've said it all along, this organic nature of Dark City. Uh, where are we all going? I, I, like I say, I've been contacted by quite a few people behind who, who aren't... They're not interested in coming up here, Bob. You know, they want to get on with it. They want to get on the ground, you know. And I know there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I know there is. Um, people now, you know, three or four people used to date. I know people here in Spain, I know people there in Spain, I'm going over there and doing Spain, can you come and do this for us, can you, yes, is the answer, yes, given the, uh, given the, the slave tokens and, and the, uh, and the time, there ain't anything we can't achieve, and eventually, we'll have money trees, we won't need slave tokens, money does go on trees, I don't know if everybody's realised this yet, but money does actually really grow, on trees. Your um, your question about um, where is the dark city going? Um, I think I have an answer. Anywhere. 
Hmm. I could actually agree with that, but I'd kind of say everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's where it will be. At the moment, it's anywhere. <laughs> when we look back on it, it will be everywhere. At the moment, it's just anywhere. Yeah, so well, come, just come. to get us back to a bit of, of news, um, there was a report of uh, earth tremor, uh, three on the Richter scale, that hit a village of Garrelsweir um, last Tuesday, and this is near the city of Groningen in Holland, and caused through fracking. Now, I'm sorry to come back to fracking again, but it's something that is a particularly bad industry for all of us. And I mean, the, the government in the UK just cannot see the light over this one. And this, this poor village is surrounding by, surrounded by dikes, of course, that keep the North Sea out. And they are really, really worried, and all their houses are just opening up cracks everywhere. Nobody can move. No, there's no property value left. And this is through a, a massive community. And of course, this is all going to start in the UK now. Have you got ideas on that? No, nobody's got anything to add to that. I was just saying, Bob, it sounds like it's like industrial genocide. Well, it's ecocide is the, the word currently for yeah. it. That's, what, that's the word that describes the, the, um, is it the economy. But the actual people, it's going to, it's, these people can't move anywhere, these people in Holland, they can't move, their value of their house is gone. They're stuck, ready to be drowned. All for really. profit. All for profit. Well, th this was also in the article. Um, I'll just go through, if I can find it quickly. It's the, the, the Dutch state took 12 billion in government revenues, so that's just the taxation element of the gas that was produced, and it caused up to 60% of the 60,000 homeowners, so what is that, about 36,000? homeowners have experienced damage to their homes and all these companies that are drilling for so-called unconventional gases are excluded to a greater extent from having to have any culpability for any of the damage to environment or people's lives that they cause. I mean, this is true in the States, it will be true here. There's no way that you can have any regulation about the quality of a, of a borehole. It's, it's impossible to use technology to make sure that the thing's complete and safe. And the escapes from it in terms of either fracking fluids or or the shale gas, which is of course methane, um, happen really, really quickly. And once it's escaped, you can't put it back. And it, this is another thing that it beggars belief. Why are we doing this to, the, to our planet? And for what? We've got oodles of renewable energy, all sorts of different sorts. We've got all the technology to put it all together. It's not hard. It's easy. But still, 
people want to destroy the environment for, for money, isn't it? And that's all it is. And governments are in cahoots with it because they can see their tax revenue increasing, thanks to all the rest of us. And they're another bunch of public servants that are supposed to be doing their best for, for all of us. Can't they see that the, the, these alternative methods, they, if, they want, if, they, if they were to implement them, they could, still make a, they could still make a profit. They could still run their business and not wreck the planet as well. Yeah, but so people would be happy then, Chris. People so would be, ha be happy and content. Um, well, I, I, my own view is the fault is the grid system in the first place because it loses 80% of the energy that goes into it in transmission. So all the huge amounts of coal or gas that's burned to produce electricity, 80% of that energy is disappearing before it gets to people's homes or to factories or whatever. And, and this is part of the the story that's ignored. It's the huge waste in this industry. And it's just unbelievable that given, even if you go with the anthropogenic climate warming propaganda, you could see that the first place to start is dismantle the grid. We don't need a massive grid system like it is. It just needs a bit of intelligent thought and resources applied in the right places, and we would cut that transmission loss into fractions. You mean go for localised power instead of transmitting it all the way across the country? Yeah, for the, for the main part, it to be localised, and obviously if there is a heavy load, then that could be transmitted, but even then, all these loads are predictable, all of them. I mean, there was um, a news report stating that the whole reason that we're having to have nuclear power stations and we're going to have to frack for gas to provide the gas power stations is because you're putting too much water in your kettle. I mean, how, how does that work? Because everyone puts too much water in their kettle, we've got to frack the countryside and destroy it. Because it's your fault, Bob. Exactly. Yeah. Your fault. Exactly. Yeah, you, they, it they isn't, was, it? Well, it is. Of course it is their fault. We won't have any clean water. <laughs> but whose fault is it? I mean, they've been sold, haven't they? I mean, it's not as if they can't find out. Um, but they've been sold, haven't they? Of course it's their fault. Like I say, I've, I've judged myself for doing it, and it was my fault. You know, it is my fault. Now, I don't do it. I, I don't leave my immersionator on all day. I do use a lot. And it's not because uh, I've suddenly got a tie. You know, I, I, I'm a skinflint or I've decided to become a, a mutant ninja toilet turd and stop bathing. I still shower and, you know, have a shower and stuff. And, but I'm using less and less because... But it's for me, it's just I don't want to give the lying, cheating, thieving scum any more money because all they do is... They don't even buy bullets now. They buy machetes and, and coerced wars and murder women and children in the street. That's what they do with it. So, so personally, I, I prefer not to, to, to give them as little as possible, really. You know, just... I, I don't dispute what you're saying. I mean, trying to ram down all that energy down the copper wire. <laughs> you know, it's like a bit Victorian, isn't it? Do you think they'd actually move on at some point into the 21st century, these people? Uh, and it is very westernised, isn't it? And I mean, not even Europe. I mean, a lot of places are off the grid in Europe. A hell of a lot of places are off the grid. Uh, I mean, you, people don't, haven't got cable telephone, you know, they haven't got, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not there. It's just, it's not there. They haven't got electricity, and they have to use bottled gas, produce their own power. Um, that's just a hell of a lot of places. It's only us lot, the rich elite, um, that, 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 complain about something, what well, these things. I mean, you don't get um, a, an Indian family picking off a tip in India complaining about the fiscal system that's being engineered by the New World Order. And they don't. 
they do, they don't them aren't their issues. They they've got other issues. You know you. The guy who's, who's like you say, who's after somewhere to sleep warm this evening, well, might not be too bad in the UK this evening, but worldwide, you know. The guy who's uh, maybe trying to get into the shade, uh, out of the heat for a little bit, uh, or even out of the cold, you know. He's just looking for somewhere to sleep. Their issues, that's not what they're thinking about. You know, that's getting down to survival now. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's... It's quite easy to look out of the world from our ivory towers here. Uh, it is. And you know, and I love my little tower. I, I'm a great, I, I think an Englishman's home is his castle, or at least it should be. Uh, but it turns out that that's no longer the case. Uh, the case is the land under our feet has been intellectually stolen from us. That's how they get away with gas fracking. We've let immature people run the country, uh, make adult decisions, and they are not capable of doing that. And we then collectively put more other people into that position, expect them to come up with sensible adult ideas, and lo and behold, they never do. But we continue to put them in that position. So I, I don't speak for the majority. I, I speak for the minority. Uh, I say I'll always be a minority, and I'm proud to be part of the minority. I really am. I fought against it for years, uh, the cost of, of business and uh, family and relations. Um, yeah, it, but I have to stick, I have to be where I am, I, I know that, I have to. Uh, because I, for one, am not going to live like that anymore. To the best of my ability, I am going to be the change. Me, I'm going to be it. I'm not expecting anybody else to do it. I'm just getting on with it myself. Um, you know what's the worst? What's the worst thing that could happen, eh, Bob? Don't seem well, to I mean, be one. No, you're exactly right, and you just brought up the point that I was going to bring up, which is the only real change is what you bring about yourself, and it isn't about trying to get everyone else to change at all. They'll change in their own good time. Um, the, the key thing is for everyone else to be able to see that there is another way. And, and if you live your life like that, they're going to be able to see it and can see that there is a, a different way to being alive. And, and it's, the, I mean, at the end of the day, this planet doesn't need us. It has been around for three and a half billion odd years and we've been around for a hundred thousand. It doesn't need us. It could get rid of us all tomorrow and be quite happy. It could get rid of all life tomorrow and be quite happy and develop a whole new evolution system. It doesn't need us. Unless you're a Scientologist, Bob, and then it was all created last Wednesday. <laughs> and dinosaurs are just put there to fuck with your head. Well, I was going to say, or an ecologist. Oh, don't go picking on David anymore. Uh, we've, got, we've, got to, we've got to show David some compassion, haven't we, now, I think. <laughs> 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 well, that was another weird thing that came up in the news that, you know, he, he put out for raising 100,000 for his free, in inverted commas, radio, and he needed to raise it in a month and to get whatever kit and people and pay them and all the rest of it. And it transpired when I looked the other day that he'd raised something like 380,000 and he'd still got eight days to go. And I did a quick calculation. I don't know how accurate it is now, but it was about £10,000 a day he was raising for free radio and it also transpired through sources I won't divulge that he's got a Barclays bank account for it all. Does anyone think you can actually start a TV station for £300,000? Do you think it would be that cheap? About ten, about 10, about 10,000. About 10,000. And you wouldn't even get there then. Excuse me? I think it's more than a million to start a radio station with all the permits and the, the buildings and 
wages. I think it's not even going to scratch the surface. Oh, oh right, no, for all the equipment and stuff. Um, yeah, of course you could. Yeah, it's not that expensive now, is it? It's a lot cheaper than you think. I mean, if you go back 10 years, satellite uplink, you know, mobile satellite uplink costs you 30 grand. You know, £30,000 to be able to uplink to a satellite. So I'm, I don't know, I'm guessing about that. I know they were very expensive. Now, £3,000. See, you can buy that. I mean, that's, 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 maybe, that's maybe how we'll, when we, we um, um, put all the ground stations in, into areas like Spain, and where the internet access may not be as good, then we'll provide a, a localised internet access for the people that are there. <laughs> we'll take it with us. Um, you see, it can be done. And, and, and to, make, to be honest, it's actually cheaper than what my internet costs me now. Um, but I live in Rip Off Britain, of course. Uh, but yeah, and so uh, technology, we can, we can use it. Um, we can, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, no doubt about it. We can use it to benefit us. Some of it, of course, when you get to gas fracking, <laughs> it's just like, hang on a minute. Yeah. Um, they take all the people who agreed that gas fracking's a good idea and let them live at the side of one of those gas fracking, uh, what do they call them? Uh, well, not wells, are they? Boars. That's what I do, Bob. Try that out for a little bit. See how you like it. Drink some of that water. Uh, yeah, that'd be the one, wouldn't it, really? Um, the, the, the thing is, all these people that want it, Mm. <clears throat> that what they need to happen is for them to realise the damage that it's causing them through everyone else. And this is the, the little bit of the evolution that needs to be brought about in everyone first, I feel. I think you know, they're talking feedback, Bob. They need a bit of feedback. Yeah, yeah. They need a bit of feel what's happening. Yeah, because I, I know full well from my point of view, when I see people being beaten in the street or, you know, starving, or I know that the resources are there for that not to happen. And it's, it does, it damages me when it's happening to somebody else. Well, we're, we're getting on towards the end of the show now. Um, a bit of good news might be that uh, 40 tonnes of GMO crops got destroyed in the US. Um, <laughs> I thought people might like to know that. It's good to end on a, on a good note. And, of course, this prompted an FBI investigation, so... No doubt the NSA is all over it and they're looking for any Facebook comments. So, you know, be careful what you type in there. Third person, everybody. Speaking of third person. I don't think it makes any difference to the way computers store information. I think they consider the third person to be the first person purely because you put it there. We could have a 9-11 Bin Laden bomb terror attack day, couldn't we? You know, where, where everybody kind of... They, 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 they did do it They did do it a while ago, didn't they? Everybody started sending emails and texts to one another with certain words in them um, just to put the NSA's uh, computers under test. Uh, I, bet it, uh, I bet it did the British ones then. I bet it completely broke it. So, yeah, it... it, it it's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous, I think. Um, I, I, it does trouble me that, that people, they kind of do tests on areas, Bob. You know, they roll, they roll things out in certain areas. Uh, and if they can get away with it once, then they'll do it again. You know, if they can lock up uh, a, a white man um, for being a terrorist, um, you know, called Brian, who's got no political or religious connections at all, then they can lock up anyone. So they try it on. Uh, and if they can get away with it, they'll do it. And that's the simplest reason man, that I can give you um, for, for why others do things. Like I say, I, I, I'm doing my best to stay more focused on what it, why I'm doing what I'm doing. 
<laughs> rather than I haven't really got enough time and energy to worry about what everybody else is doing. Uh, but you know, like like many people say, and I've heard it said by yourself, I think, and, uh, uh, and other members of the crew. You know, you, you've got to keep your eyes open and uh, uh, and see what's coming. You know, you got you can't just put your head down. Well, yeah, I don't I wouldn't focus too much what on the lost of our society are doing in their lost ways. Got to keep bringing it to the forefront, like you say, Bob. You know, gas fracking it is going on. Um, it, it, we need to keep mentioning it. I, I'd sooner be talking about gas fracking, which is guaranteed hard cold facts, um, curing uh, disease with with um, empoil, hard cold facts, than I would about gas fracking or reptilians cracking open. Uh, excuse me, then uh, uh, chemtrails than about chemtrails uh, and the reptilians cracking open the planet. Uh, and I'm not saying the reptilians or the chemtrails aren't going to crack open the planet. Um, but what I am saying is, uh, one, is hard cold facts. There is no conspiracy there. There is, there's no, there's no, it, you know, we don't need a jury. We don't, we don't need to have a look at this anymore. We know certain now, absolutely certain, uh, that, that these things, some things need to be stopped. Uh, and some things need to be started. Well, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. And that's kind of a good note to finish off the show today, I feel. So thank you, Chris and Paul, for your contribution. And Sudama, who's been tirelessly producing in the background. I feel it's been a good show. And I hope all of you have a good week. And we look forward to speaking with you again next week. Have a good one. Bye.